Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me once again. So today we're going to have a look at an Airfix uh, new generation model. Um, came out about 18 months ago, uh, just under two years now, and really uh, quite an overdue kit. We haven't had a nice Hunter in 148 scale for some time. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody's done one. Um, I'm sure they have, I can't quite remember. Uh, but my, in fact, Really the fact that Airfix have um, decided that this is obviously popular enough to, to make it a goer and of course there are uh, not just British hunters but also uh, the Dutch Air Force used them, the Swiss Air Force used them and we sell this uh, aircraft, it was very successful, we sold it around the world um, it was the first uh, basically supersonic jet fighter that we ever had I think so let's have a look what we got first of all, fabulous artwork, bring them in a bit some really nice, uh, this is the sort of CGI style uh, artwork that Airfix seem to do these days, but they do do it very well in fairness to them. On the side we've got some of this CGI sort of uh, CAD work, which I'm not so keen on in terms of putting it on the side if I'm honest, but it does give you an idea what the aircraft model will look like. And on the other side, turning it upside down, it gives you an idea of what the options are. So we've got an aircraft here from 63 Squadron, Royal Air Force and F6, or the uh, Flying Training School at Valley and Anglesey, or the Royal Netherlands Dutch Air Force at Leeuwarden in the Netherlands in 1964. Uh, as usual, it's one of these very strong, uh, nice quality, uh, modern generation Airfix boxes, which is quite, quite robust. You know? So let's have a look what's inside. Without further ado, pop that over there. That's one of those reflections. There we are. Right, now then. Now, I have to confess, I always get a little bit nervous, especially when I open a box and I see this new generation blue plastic, which reminds me of blue tack, like I always say. It can be a very soft and springy, rubbery type of plastic. Let's get it out of the way. Instructions. Now I have got a few aftermarket things in here, I better warn you. Oops, piece off the sprue of the nose. Yeah, I went for a few extra decals. Um, not sure why I went for so many. Uh, I've got the F6 Part 3, and that includes uh, various um, options which you can have here. It's got the Royal Combat Flying Training Skill based at Stradis Hall, 1961. Stradis Hall is not an RAF base I'm familiar with, so I don't know too much about that one. Then we've got the RAF Broadie in South Wales, August 79, Tactical Weapons Unit. I think that's quite a fetching scheme. I think that's the one I might go for. And there's a couple of others uh, in a similar vein, or blue one, or again, another Broadie one. RAF Broadie, I should say. Then, on the other extra deck I'll set aboard, we've got a whole host of different options, we won't get to all of them, but um, we've got a complete later style uh, sort of early 70s uh, camo wraparound with the dark roundels, low vis scheme, um, so that's plenty plenty of options there. And we have got some nice decals that come out to original kit, which we'll get into in a second. Where to begin? We'll start with those decals, as we started talking about decals already, here they are. Nice checkerboard style, and we've got some uh, a decal set here, which I'm pretty sure is been printed by Cartograph in Italy. Doesn't actually say that. Does it? normally normally it says printed in Italy, but anyway, you can literally tell at a glance that it's Cartograph because they're always very fine, carrier films very minimal, and they always look absolutely stellar, and they really do look nice actually. Just a, just a bit restricted. That's why I bought some more. So, you've got some, it's the old style um, high vis, shall we say, 1960s roundels. The checkerboard thing looks brilliant, I've got to say. And then your traditional markings, and then your Dutch, those very interesting Dutch roundels that they have, like a. Reminds, reminds me of a Ford Cortina Mark 1, rear lights. <laughs> those of you of a certain age will know what I'm talking about, I'm sure. Right. 
Um, I actually got an extra, this was a gift actually, somebody very kindly bought me. It's um, a quick boost ejector seat. Um, I think the ejector seat's not bad in the kit actually, but this is this is on another level. Martin Baker ejector seat, just the ticket. Lots of fine detail, got the belts on it. Yeah, quite hard to replicate that without using resin, so that's a bit of a bonus for me. But let's have a look at the instructions. Contact 6, let's go for it. Now then. I've got a funny sneaking suspicion. It looks like it doesn't actually come with a pilot. I'm going to check that actually. Oh, hang on a second. Oh, that's some of that nice new air Yeah, it looks like I'm right. There's no pilot. Just checking. Okay. Hmm. Right. So you start off by building your eject seats if you haven't done what I've done and got the aftermarket. So I'm just seeing a fraction. Um, then you're building up your front rear bulkhead in the tub for the actual cockpit itself, putting your seat in then, then you stick, then your instruments go in, and then ultimately your gun sight, and then the underside you've got the part of the wheel well bulkhead construction. Uh, we've then got <coughs> that going in, a few holes to drill here and there. That goes into the main cockpit side, and then you build up the front bulkhead and then the the fan blades for the uh, the engine just behind the wing spar. Uh, intakes, let's set the trunk and these intakes don't have too many eject pin marks on it. Uh, and then you build those up and they go in and slot in ahead of the actual fan blades. Still building just on that uh, left hand side, port side of the fuselage. Drill the holes again in the side, oxygen bottles going in. Trunk again, you're repeating the whole process and then ultimately bringing the two sides together. Um, it says here, depending on which version you're using, you might need to fill in the gun ports. It says here. And uh, this airfix thing that really drives me crazy, uh, where it says that the AF1006 aircraft stand is sold separately. Don't know why they keep doing this, why they can't include it, it just, just escapes me. Just put it in the kit. Like you always used to do. Then we've got the actual engine uh, trunking into the engine itself. Uh, the tailpipe it is in fact. Building that into the, the rear fuselage which then it gets inserted under the tail. Be careful make, make sure you don't get any big gaps or joins there. Slotting the uh, main wing which just slots down on top of the fuselage and then you build the actual underside of the wings in afterwards. It's kind of a strange way of doing it. I'm not sure that... Uh, okay, it's because it yeah, it kind of locks in here above and clamps in the actual intakes. That's the reason they've done it this way. Then you wheel, build the wheel wells and finally make sure you've got the right holes drilled depending on what stores you're going to apply on the plane. And then you put your rudder in and your tail planes go in. And then we start building the flaps and the ailerons. And it gives you options for the angles, recommends the angles, maximum 13 degrees deflection either way. So it's, don't, don't go crazy, so it makes it look unrealistic. 80 degrees of flap deflection. Then the same on the other side. And then we build up the undercarriage legs and the actual uh, gear bay. All going in, support hydraulic struts for the undercarriage leg. Looks very clear. They're nice instructions, I've got to say, they're nice and clear. Doesn't try to do too many things in one picture, just keeps it simple. Then you've got your gear covers and the gear doors going in. And it even shows at the bottom exactly how it should look in terms of angles, so you can't go wrong. Then you build your wheels themselves, main, main wheels and your nose wheel and then that goes in with the little Aiden cannon pods ammunition pods on either side bulges then we've got the air brake going on and you can have it open, deployed or closed you've got your underwing tanks and Finally, your windows in the uh, the light windows at the end of the 
uh, tips on the wings and your canopy. And you can either have it open or closed. If it's open, so if you split, it's closed, it's one piece. So, that's it. Lots and lots of stencils there. Be wary of this with airfix. They go a bit crazy on stencils these days. Uh, it's a bit more understandable on a bigger kit like this. It's a 148 fair, fair size, so it's not too bad. But there's a lot of them. How many have we got there? 150, 160, 160, 180, couple of hundred. Couple of hundred stencils. A lot. But then, rather impressively, we've got these lovely uh, colour marking sheets. Which they're, they're doing this really well, Airfix are. This is just a, almost a duplication of what Tammy is, and that's not a bad thing to copy. So we've got. Uh, RAF Water Beach Battle of Britain Memorial Display Flight 1958, which is very nice. Shows all the call outs, and that's your checkerboard pattern with your yellow tail. Alternatively, the Anglesey Valley Training School showing the more simple markings. And then a separate one on its own for the Royal Netherlands Air Force. Very wise choice that they bought this from the from the Brits. I think that was a great great move. It gave Holland a jet fighter really at the beginning, you know, day one sort of thing. Very impressive that they did that. They had a great choice. And in fact, ever since they've been quite good at this. The Dutch they've been um, buying F-16s and all sorts of advanced aircraft. So uh, yes, not not to be caught out again after what's happened in their history, of course. So. What have we got? Sprue time. Let's have a looky. Now it's worth saying, um, I haven't built this yet obviously. Um, however, people that have built it rave about this kit. They say that it's up there, maybe not quite as good as the, uh, the Wellington that I reviewed a week or two ago, but very, very close. A real nice fitting kit. Things just seem to fall together nicely. Very on airfix like, very, very, I wouldn't say Tamiya, that's probably overpraising them, but heading in that direction. Uh, a big step forward. Uh, so, what you see here is actually quite an impressive bit of engineering. I just hope the plastic's okay. I get a bit worried about the soft plastic, but I'm saying that it's the bluest, bluey grey. But a bit like the Wellington, it actually feels like it's, it's a bit harder. So, actually, we might be alright. Let's bring you in to have a good look. The three, three major sprues plus the clear parts. So this is this is where we get into trouble. I'm going to have to turn that round so that the camera is not focusing on that in the background. Okay. There we are. Now then, let's have a look. So we've got some some nice parts here. Really nice moulding. The first thing that strikes me is whilst there is flash on this sprue, especially around the centre area of the sprue, I can't see any at all on the parts. They seem to be completely flash free, which is absolutely fantastic and a big step forward for Airfix, I'd say. So, here we've got our cockpit tub. is quite nicely moulded. Gear bay doors here. That's for the closed option. If you have it closed they're all in one piece. Have it open they are separate as per here. You've got your ejector seats with or without pilot which I find a bit strange because no pilot appears to be provided unless we've missed him but we'll see that in a minute. Um, nice detail. I mean this ejector seat as they go this is not, this is not bad. It's not bad at all. That's the air speed brake. You've got a little bulkhead at the front. You've got your tyres. It's really nicely moulded. I've got to say there's some beautiful detail. Instrument panel here. Looks good. Looks nicely moulded. Maybe could have had a little bit more detail, but it's a little bit soft, but it's not, it's not a problem. Even the wheels here, wheels and brakes, very, very nicely figured. Looks very sharp. 
And then you've got various parts of the, uh, the this is the bay, wheel bays. Looks great. And then you've got pylons for the weapons, drop tanks, etc. And here we've got speed brakes. We've got various parts of the gear doors here, different sections, and the actual main legs themselves. Okay, on to the clear parts. Now, this one I don't think is open. Shall we open it? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's not cheat the uh, the viewers. We're in. We're in. Yeah, we're in. Okay. Now then, it's a little loose on the sprue, but still on it. It's better than some kits I've recently reviewed. Italeri, are you listening? <laughs> no, in fairness to them, I think that was bust by somebody. Okay, so we've got yeah, pretty good clarity. It's a little bit of distortion on, on the one piece. And I'd say there's less, far less of it on this, uh, this two piece one here. And then you've got the front windscreen, which looks beautifully clear. That's very, very crystal clear. Very, very nice. And then you've got the little uh, tips, lights, etc. So put that away where it's going to be safe and dropping off the sprue. They look great, got to say. Very nice. Big sprues now, so I'll come back a bit. There we go. <clears throat> the wings, first of all. The wings. Now, well, that's again. Free of flash, very very nicely moulded, beautiful. I do wonder how it's going to fit. You know, I'm a bit worried about this sort of slotting over thing. Um, you can see that way that they've moulded the uh, the inside of the bay for the undercarriage. That's uh, the well is really really good. That's, uh, that's stunning. Some real quality moulding from Airfix here. Then we've got the um, the Matra gun rocket pods. They look nice. They look really good. And the pods themselves, and obviously those are the tips. Then we've got our um, drop tanks, like so. Then we've got the underneath of the, the wing sections, and again, you know, there's no flash. The panel lining is very crisp, it's very sharp, no problem. The rudder, yeah, and the tail planes here. Looks stunning, that looks beautiful. Can't see any trouble there at all. <clears throat> a really huge sprue, which is the uh, the main fuselage one. So we've got two sides and we've got this rear section here and there's two variants of course. There's the section that has the um, the lip on the above the jet pipe and the one that doesn't. Which I think if I'm not mistaken is the F4 so I think they're going to develop this. I think this is the one we want. Let me check. Can't see in the photo. Doesn't tell you. Uh, I like the lip, I have to say, it looks very nice with the lip. Very hunterish. And then you've got your uh, rear trunking for the jet pipe coming out the back of the engine there. And then basically we've just got these um, pieces of wheel well and trunking. Now let's have a look at this trunking, so I'm a bit worried about this, whether we're going to get some uh, ejector pins. Well, there is an ejector pin in it. See if we can see this up close. Can you see it there? That's a little bit disappointing in the same here. See that? Yeah. Um, yeah, you might want to get the sunny stick on that and swipe it off. Then we've got here ailerons and flaps. Uh, and then on to the actual fuselage, so let's take a closer look at that. 
I mean, it looks really nice. The shape looks that beautiful hunter shape that we're all familiar with. And it what strikes me the hunter is like a latter day Spitfire. It's got that grace about it. Something about the wings, the shape, like a bird. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, um, you know, some lovely pan line detail in there. It's a very nice kit, I've got to say. Now, this was retailing for, I think, 31, 32 quid. Uh, it's about, so about $50 in the States, I think. Um, I'm not built it, so I always reserve judgment, especially with airfix. <laughs> But people that have built it do give very glowing reports about the kit, so to be fair, I don't think you're going to have any problems at all. Um, and it is affordable, it's going to look nice, it's in a nice size, not too big, not too small. Got my nose here, one bit of part we missed, wasn't it? Yep, that's it. Hunter nose, you can't go wrong with that. Let's bring you in so you can see that. Yeah, so, I mean, what is there to say? Um, it's a very affordable kit. The instructions are very clear. It's got nice decals. A little bit, I think the decals would have been nice. There have been a few more options, which is why I bought some more myself. But you can just go to Hannant's or whoever and extra decal and get some more like I've done. Um, overall, my impressions are extremely positive. From what I've seen in the box, I think it's probably a 9 out of 10, if we're honest. Um, so there we have it really, I think that you've got an absolute winner there, it's a beautiful looking plane, it's a nice plane in real life and it'll look absolutely great with some you know, stores on it, you can't go wrong. So that's the Airfix 148 Hawk Hunter F6, hope you enjoyed the video, hope you found it interesting, please stay tuned because there'll be more videos coming up soon, in the meantime please like, share and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll have some more interesting stuff coming up for you in the not too distant future. In the meantime, thanks very much for watching and bye for now. Cheers.